Hi class, now we go to the last part of chapter 3. Uh, we are actually quite far behind, so uh, class, make sure that you really can finish the whole chapter 3 because next week I'm right. Uh, I, I wish that I can finish chapter 4 and 5 together next week. Okay, uh, now we go to the last part of chapter 3, that is transpiration. Okay, so what is transpiration? You still remember we learned in form 1. So transpiration is a loss of water, loss of water in the in the form of water vapor. Remember, huh? it is losing from the plant through through a through stomata or through stoma. Okay, so it's a loss of water, uh, in a water vapor through stoma. Okay, and then uh, in this is in form one chapter. I guess is right after respiration chapter 2 or 3 so uh, this is not a new thing okay so if you look at the line your textbook okay you see this is a cross-sectional area of your leaf so this is the surface of the leaf and this is the bottom of the leaf you can see that uh, if you immerse a leaf in water you can see a lot of small bubble underneath right so this is where all the stoma lie on here this is lower epidermis and then inside you have xylem and phloem that is the new terms that we are going to learn today so first we have to know what is stoma so zoom into the microscope this one i shown in class before this is stoma stoma is the opening and this is gut cell okay so the stoma is closed the stoma is open so beside you have two gut cell okay so another new term that you have to know is glutation or exudation okay glutation is the water droplet you look at this diagram water droplet at the end of the of the leaf this is not morning dew this is the release of water that uh, happen especially during night time when the air is very humid it means that they are sangat lembab udara sangat lembab so the plant also is very turgid have enough water so you want to actually uh, excrete all the water you look at the terms here so glutation is different from dew drop okay from dew drop because dew drop is formed from the condensation of the water from surrounding and then glutation is actually from the plant itself okay so that is uh, slightly different so what is a factor affecting factor affecting first thing you have to know what is transpiration is like revision second point you have to know what is the factor affecting transpiration okay uh, transpiration this is also revision first is light intensity light intensity if the light is very strong the intensity is very high so the transpiration rate will drop right okay temperature if the temperature is very high then the transpiration will also drop okay another one is air humidity if it is very humid uh, of course we it will trans tra the transpiration will happen uh, because uh, but it depends on because when the day is very dry normally it come together with very high temperature right so when it is very dry very high temperature it is very very high then the it will, the plant will carry out more transpiration to cool down the plant itself until certain point then it will drop okay another thing is movement of air this is not a new thing i emphasize again uh, just revision from your form one okay so another things i want to emphasize here is the things that in your textbook you look at this one this is this probably a new thing for you but this is what we call pathometer a uh, pathometer is to measure you see that this is a plant right so it will have transpiration here the release of water the loss of water here and then it causes the water absorption from the root so you can see that the color ink or the air bubble here will move towards the plant this question ever asked in pt3 where students really blur with the whole diagram okay it's actually it's also from four syllabus huh? but you look at this diagram you know that this is potometer nothing scary about it it is just to measure the rate of transpiration if the rate of transpiration is very high of course the bubble will move very fast huh? uh, if you put the plant under uh, spinning or fan or under sunlight you can see bubble will move very fast okay just as simple as that okay now we have new things that you have to know the structure of the trans transportation of plant 
Okay, so if you cut off the plant, the, this is the shoot, huh? batang. Okay, you cut it off and then you're supposed to see under uh, with magnifying glass, you can see it obviously like this. This is for cotyledon. Huh? Okay, you can see that inside is what we call xylem. Okay, inside is what we call xylem and outside is what we call phlegm. Okay, phlegm. So xylem, function of xylem is to absorb is to absorb water of course from root lah. so this is the root okay so xylem xylem in the middle okay it will absorb water and together a uh, mineral go up okay phlegm is from leaf okay let's say leaf here it carry out photosynthesis right so the for the food or the glucose that produced from photosynthesis will be transported down to this phlegm Okay, so it is separated nicely. Inside is liquid for water. Outside is food. In between, you see, this is the whole thing like this. In between, we call it can, cambium. Okay, cambium is very important here because cambium will build new xylem inside and new phloem outside. Okay, so if this is your plant, okay, and then if you cut off one layer, outside layer, you just remove this layer, you will find that eh, this part, upper part, will actually get swollen. Why? Because the food cannot come down. So if you want to really chop off the tree or whatever, make sure that you chop deeper until xylem, then it will die very fast. Lah, because we cannot survive without water, same as plant. Okay, so again, you have to remember this is xylem and this is phlegm. Xylem is to transport water and mineral from root to leaf. And then phlegm is transport food, or we call glucose, from leaf to every part of the plant. So you see that it is not mixed together and it is not connected. Unlike like a uh, human or animal, we actually we have uh, artery and we have vein and it is connected use, uh, via uh, capillary, right? But plant doesn't really uh, connect. Okay, so do you have to, in your notes, right, there is a column for you to draw uh, the cross-sectional area of xylem and phloem for leaf, shoot and root. Okay, so make sure that you know how it looks like because if objective question, you have to know structure question also, you have to know label all these things. You have to know which is xylem, which is phlegm and what is the function of it. Okay, I better write it here. This is for glucose, okay, of food. Okay, now last part in your textbook, it is the uh, comparison. You have to compare uh, blood circulatory system in mammal or in animal and also transport system in plant okay so now look at uh, the similarity is actually both actually is transport system both transport nutrient water and dissolved substances and both is actually needed for complex organism up here okay so what is the differences this one animal we need pump we need heart and valve this one no pump no heart no valve right and then uh, for animal we have artery we have vein we have capillary but for plant we have only two that is xylem and phlegm okay and then um, uh, this is actually connected as i mentioned just now connected and this is not connected that is the uh, differentiation between plant and animal so what you have to do now class you have to answer after this whole of topic you have to answer formative practice 3.1 3.2 3.3 3.4 until 3.5 you don't have to copy the question you just write me the answer okay so you have to really tidy up your chapter 3 notes uh, spend a little bit a longer time on your study and then I will give merit for those who had complete work after uh, after the uh, quarantine. Lah. And then we expect to have longer probably stay at home. And then class, I would like you to show me your effort. And this is the time I differentiate who have motivation and who actually have a, a very self high self-discipline that's all thank you class